Today we'll review the Vaunt headlight and taillight combination. Hello legends and super legends, welcome to Vela Harmony. In today's video I'm going to be reviewing a product made by a company called Vaunt that is a bicycle headlight and taillight combination. The box is right there. They sent a couple of samples to the channel and I got a chance to look at them and uh, they're pretty functional so I've decided to give, the, give it a thorough review and kind of walk you through the features of the product. Uh, comes in a simple cardboard box, that's what the light looks like, get to see that and nicely packaged. It has the, the wiring for the USB, sits in here and that's the bracket to put the light on the front, the front light and this is the rear light. So let's get into the review. The rear light, I looked at the other one that they sent because they sent two samples and I opened it up because first thing I got when I got this was I saw this cable in the box so I assumed both front and rear were USB. That's not the case. The front is USB rechargeable. The rear uses a coin cell battery common to most cyclists, the, the famous 2032 coin cell battery under this housing here. So this housing peels off, peel this over the lip here because the light is like two sides. I thought that's a kind of cool design and in a little while you will see how it looks on the bike. It looks like the tail, similar to the tail light of a car. And so once you peel this housing off, this is the unit. And under there, you can see the coin cell battery sits in there. It's a CR2032. Now, what I did notice when I peeled this off is that when you put it back on, you need to make sure that this sleeve is pulled to where it gets in these crevices and fits nicely in there. Because if it's too far away, since this is inserted in there, when you press this button on the outside of indentation, you won't be able to reach the actual button because that's the button that it's getting to right there, that pink button. That's what basically powers the unit. You see, I pushed it as the first stage. Second stage is a blink. Then it, ha it has three stages. It's a slower blink and then it goes off. Okay, so if you don't put this on when you change your battery properly, when you press this housing, the cover, it won't be reaching this button very easily. So you got to make sure you pull it on. So let me show you what, what you do. You put that back in there. You just slip it like a sleeve. And how often are you going to replace the battery? It's going to take a while, I'm sure. So after it gets on there, what I was saying is you want to hold this unit on the side like this and pull this to make sure the sleeve sit seats properly in between the two tail lights. And when you turn that on like that, then it will work. So it's not, it's not a flaw, but you just have to make sure anytime you replace the battery. All right. And this is rated as far as um, the fall shock resistance is three feet, which is like one point something meters or whatever. So if it falls three feet or less, you should be okay. I think any kind of technological device should be really treated with care to where you're not dropping it from high places because most of these things use circuit card assemblies in there that handles the cycling of the modes and all of that. So they're, they're delicate equipment. But what they've designed is that they have this clip that goes easily around your bars. I'm going to go ahead and mount it on here. Based, what I like to do usually is I'm going to do it the way, the way everyone does it. And I will show you how I like to do mine and then I will decide how I actually use it. So all I do is I slip this. Most bikes have the cables running here. I like to put it under the cable. So it's actually touching the bar. I pull this around and just clip it on here. And it's already set up to fit, you know, most size bars because they've got enough almost like a belt. I'm using the first cut hole on here for a standard road bike, 
bar. So that means if you have smaller bars, like a mountain bike or other bikes, it would work because you got plenty of notches to work with. It's very secure. And the light has a notch to slip onto the bracket. The lighting itself, first mode, bright, very bright. Look at that. Then you dim it down. Now you got flashing and off. Okay, and basically you just slip it on here. And I haven't done this before, so I'm trying to see if I'm doing it the right way. There we go. So it's easy to get on the bike. And to take it off the bike, you can leave the bracket on the bike and just pull this tab right here to slide it off. And it comes off. And I guess that's why it was hard getting on. So the tab was kind of in the way. So when you're putting it on, you just... So it's best to pull the tab down and then slip it off or to pull the tab down to put it on. And it's on there. I like that it's black because it's all stealth. But you can also try to mount, sometimes we'll mount our lights upside down so that the top of the bar is nice and clean. You could do it with this light away from the wires on this part of the bar, like that. Because that way it's underneath, out of the way. I hope the camera, yeah, there we go, I will do that. So now what I've done is I've mounted it upside down. It doesn't matter whether it's upside down or right side up. The lighting still works. See that? And I will probably run this light like that for the road test. You see that? Look at that beam. So I like, I like having straps, which I'm glad that they put on their bracket because I don't care for brackets that you have to screw onto the bike. So it's good that they used straps. They didn't attach the bracket permanently into the light. I'm sure it's just an engineering choice, but that that's nice that they have this strap to where it's easily removed from your bars. You know, so whether you want to leave the bracket on the bars or not, doesn't really matter. You can just have the bracket on the light like you see here and then just put it on the bike when you need to. So it's the same difference if the bracket were per permanently attached to the light or like they've designed it here. But I really like the aesthetics. So from the side, the light is underneath the way I've mounted it. It's right on the edge of where my tape ends. So it's not gonna be in the way of your hands. All those details, when you're riding, it won't be in the way. And it's right under the computer, my Garmin. So now when you turn the light on, all people see is a light. There's nothing on top of your bars. So you can mount it up here or underneath your call. So, so far, this is impressive. Very, re the reason I decided to review this is uh, some of these lights can be very expensive. At this price point, this is very competitive. All right, once again, Legends, I'm outside, it's dark, but I wanna see if I can get the impact I want on this light. So we got the steady mode, I'm gonna back up. That's the light, that's the steady mode. Go to the next mode. So you can see, I'm gonna do the road review. I'm not gonna be riding at night, but I just wanna kinda of give you an idea of. So we're gonna to go to the next mode. It's a slower blink. And I'm walking away so you can really see. The camera really doesn't do it justice. It's a lot brighter than you're seeing on the camera. I'm gonna to try to get as close as I can to replicate what I'm seeing in real time. So about here is a fair representation. Right about there is what I'm seeing from further back with my, my naked eye. So, so when I walk back, what you're seeing here like this, this brightness, because the camera has to keep up with the speed of the light. When I walk back this far, and you see how it looks smaller? In real time, it's not that small. It's very bright. That's a lot brighter than you can see on here. So very effective. And then the two taillights, I think it's kind of a nice touch that they look almost like a vehicle where you got red lights on both sides. I come to the front. I've mounted it. I mounted the light upside down because I like my bars being clean like that. See that? I, mount, I just put the strap on here and basically mounted the light under here to the left of the computer because when we're riding, the opposing traffic is on the left side, in this country anyway. 
If you're in South Africa, Australia, another country that rides on the left side of the road, you would put the, it would be more effective to put this light on that side, either up here or down there. So I'm gonna turn the light on. That's the first, that's full bright. Look at that. And yes, wow. I can't even see the bike. Just like you see here, it's actually brighter as my naked eye. It's a lot brighter. It's the glare going on and we got a lot of moisture. We had a lot of rain, so you can see the lens looks a little foggy. There, that's better. I got some of the fog off. Made a difference right there. Big difference. But you still can't see the bike. That's what I'm talking about. This camera does not represent that light. The light is like a 5000K looking light. It's bright white. You can see the difference in color. Look at the lights on the house back there. You see how yellow they look? And look at the light on the bike, how white it is. Much whiter in real life. I'm gonna go towards the light and then I'm gonna change the mode. So now that's just the steady. So with the steady blink, as I go back, it still is very bright. So yes, I can definitely see myself using a light like this. Let's go back. There we go. Look at that. That is very bright. There is no way you can be, I think this is, this is almost like a strobe lighting. It's too bright in my opinion. I will not use this, this is too bright. You, if you are on a, a rural road or something and you are worried about visibility, that's the mode to use, but it's too powerful for the city. <laughs> wow, very good lighting. So basically, we'll turn it on here. I did part of the review last night, look at that light. That's bright. And then you push the button again. I couldn't even see the button, it was so bright. bright. That's dim. You don't wanna use this mode, my brother. Go over there and look at this mode. It is too bright. Yeah, it is. Woo -wee. It is. So come back over here. Let me let me go over there because I want to film it. Because I did it last night about three. Well, this morning, three in the morning. I'm out here. Yeah, this will blind you. Oh, oh, you yeah, it's too bright. Yeah. I I don't like that mode. It's just too powerful. I hope the camera can do it justice. I've seen people ride with lights like that. It just seems a bit much. Yeah. But it's powerful. But look. I have no idea because this one is USB. We're gonna test it today. The one on the back you gotta see. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put this is the mode I wanna run it in. Okay. I'm gonna run it in dim like that. Okay. That's like a headlight. Yeah. It is very, very effective. You can see that. Now let me show you the rear. Look at that. Two yeah. like a tail light. Yeah. Okay. Now you can push that again. You get one speed, mm -hmm. push that again. Then you get a slower speed, which is kind of cool. That's why I want to run it in. Isn't that cool? That is nice. It only goes here because if I put it down here, this would block it. Yeah. Okay, because of the design of my bike. But the cool thing about this, the sides, this rubber is very soft. It will never harm your shorts. Mm -hmm. This clip is in the middle, so you'll never touch it. Right. So it's not an issue for people whose legs will rub against that. I like that. So it looks like a vehicle with two red lights. Look at that. The only thing about this is not USB chargeable. It has a coin battery, the 2032. Uh, There's two of them in there. Okay. Okay, you'll see that in the review. It has two batteries. So we, I don't know how long, but since it has two, it's, it's got to have a long life. Yeah. So I'm just setting it there. 